computers are going to take over? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to die. Yeah, uh-huh. This is a restoration of a salt marsh. So many, many years ago, this whole area was, was marsh, but um, what happened is they filled it in with debris from, um, at the northern end, there's more like regular garbage, and down here, it was mostly construction debris from when they were building big buildings or when they demolished buildings and rebuilt buildings. So they filled this in about 50 from, filled from the marsh level, which is sort of down at the water level here at, at low tide, all the way up to like 15 feet high, full of debris. And um, there's stocks over there. That was a policy at that time. Um, right there. Since then, we've come to discover that yeah. salt marshes are really valuable Dots. because they um, are capable of absorbing mm -hmm. water. Not in the back there, I'll hold one. They are nurseries for small fish um, and a lot of other invertebrates. Like uh, salt marshes typically have um, muscles attached to the roots that help hold the, the plants in place. So. We dug out uh, 15 feet of debris and we put it in that high area over there, which we're calling a berm, and we covered it. So that was really what cost so much, was taking all of that material out and depositing it over there. Um, we covered it with, with a combination of um, uh, compost. Marshes are unique, salt marshes are unique uh, because the tide comes in and completely inundates these plants, you know, up over the top of the plants at this point. Um, when they get taller, it will inundate most of the plants. Thank They'll be just sitting in salt water for hours and then the water will go up. The tides happen twice a day, so part of the day they, they are actually open to the air, but, but they're underwater for a very long time. Very few plants can handle that kind of stress, you know, to be in water and be in salt water. So there's only a few plants that can manage that. Um, Spartina alterniflora, which is what is really planted in the low marsh, is pretty much the only plant in this area that can exist in the low marsh. Um, What's this one? I mean, it's the main, it's, it's the main plant in a low, in a low marsh. Is that uh, this plant here? What no, you just said? No, no. Spartina this. will only be in the water. Okay. And it's, uh, it starts from where it's pretty wet still. Uh-huh. Um, then, you know, the different plants start to mix in as it gets a little higher. And as it gets higher, it moves to these shrubs that can handle partial inundation with salt water, but not too much. So high tide comes to about, you know, kind of where, a little above where those those shrubs um, begin. Um, mm -hmm. And what happens, this is a new planting, but the reason you get this, this kind of sponge action of being able to absorb um, storm surges is, is that the plants will grow, then they die back in the fall, and that material is decomposed right there. And after years and years of this, it builds up to be a, a layer of peat, which is very absorb absorbs water extremely well. So the older a salt marsh is, the more peat it has. And in, in some ways, you know, it it's a more complete system for absorbing the water. This is a new salt marsh, so it'll take a while to really establish that function. But in the meantime, when the tide comes in, little tiny fish just uh, come into this area and hide within the, um, the, the stalks of the plants, and so the big fish can't grab them. Um, and in that case, you'll see a lot of parents here eating uh, what
what's yeah, what what they can see, but the big fish can't get in here. But the herons can get in and kind of pick it, pick away at uh, the little fish. Word. And then what happens from the birds? Where where do they take the herons that come in? Yeah, and then what happens with the nutrients that go through their body? Huh? Where? In the water? Up further. So birds kind of... people's hats. <laughs> but birds take, I think it's true, right? Birds take some of the nutrients from the salt marsh up into area, other areas. Um, that's, that's one of the purposes of birds. It's one of the things they do. Right. So do you do you have other questions though? Like I have a question, which is, how long is this restoration project planned for? Given that what you said about how long it takes to make a salt marsh, is this like a ten-year plan or a fifteen-year plan or? Well, what's I the... mean, at this point, it'll t take a, over its own dynamic. You know, we really won't be doing much unless uh -huh. there would be damage, which we d we survived Sandy really well. So. Uh -huh. Um, we're in pretty good condition here. Um, so it will just happen on its own and succession will take place. So cool. um, we will mow some areas, you know, the, uh, this kind of buffer area that's around here, we'll mow some areas to keep them uh, as a meadow because if we didn't mow, all the shrubs and the, and the tree seeds would come in and, and they'd begin to grow. But we'll probably be, keep a number of areas open as meadow, and you end up um, mowing one every year or every other year. So where we put uh, the bird nests, that's a meadow area? Yeah. Okay. Did everyone hear that? You should keep track of that word. It's an important word. So what? how would you define a meadow as opposed to a marsh? Is that... Well, a marsh is in water. Uh -huh. you know, a marsh is in water. A meadow would be higher upland, and it would be you can have a wet meadow or a dry meadow, but it wouldn't be salt water. It would be upland, so it would be fresh water or it would be dry. In this case, all of these meadows are, are going to be, you know, dry meadows. Yeah, flowers, wildflowers, and grasses. And in a wet meadow, you'd have wildflowers, grasses, and sedges and rushes which are acclimated again to uh, wet conditions. If some of the tree swallows, because I live right over here. Mm -hmm. This is my, uh, and this is my, I'm on the board of the homeowners oh, association. Oh, okay. Over here, the party park. Uh -huh. And some of the, some of the tree swallows, uh -huh. I see them, they're crackled and they're at the top of the pilings. Uh -huh. And some of the tree swallows have been flying around now and over there looking at different nursing sites over there also. So the fact that they're over here, now they're spreading into this community also, the tree swallows, which I never saw before. Yeah. Cool. Can anyone tell me what those are? Thank you. Well, I thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Usually I'm on the other side, so I can photograph the bird from the other side of the side. Yeah, it is. That's LaGuardia Airport. Yep. So, um, we're, we're just going to be here for, uh, um, excuse me. Come on, wait, wait. When I said don't kick around, that's what we don't want you to do. Because it's a restoration. So, so just, you can walk on it, but don't do that, okay? Native plants. Um, uh, everything that we planted here is, is typical of a lot of meadows, um, and certainly coastal meadows. But, um, yeah, there's just grasses and. But I thought a lot of stuff couldn't grow in sand. Um, well, mushrooms need a lot of um, organic material to survive, and native meadow plants uh, don't often need that much. So, material. so my understanding was some of the some of the invasive plants 
that you don't want yeah, won't idea, won't the sand will make those go away and the meadow plants will is that the hope yeah yeah our, our did you hear that answer Native plants, which can grow and are more adapted to those soils, will take over and outcompete the uh, invasive plants, which tend to do better with a higher nutrient soil. So, what this whole area was mugwort. It was solid mugwort. Which are those things that look high. like wheat, kind of long? Yeah. And um, we'll see some over there. Yeah, and it, it was very hard to, to remove, so um, one of the strategies is to put good soil, uh, but, you know, low nutrient, sandy soil. So do you hear why that was a good question? Why was it a good question? Because I'm bored. Okay, that's not why. <laughs> It was a good question because there are some plants that do grow in sand and others that don't. And that's exactly why they want to use the sand. Cool. All right. So please, please mark on your forms. We will be putting these into the computer and then putting them up on eBird. Okay. So your data is going to go to scientists. So be careful about your data. Okay. So make sure, make sure you put the time down right now, which is 12.10. And we will have, and we will have time. You want to do it in ten-minute sections, so we'll have time to do th about three different viewings. Okay, so do it till twelve twenty. Go to a different spot, view for another ten minutes, and then a different spot for another ten minutes. Okay, and then we'll get back on the bus. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, nope. Yeah. Should, uh, where will you be? Measure right behind the bar. Okay, I'll find you. I don't think I do. Where's Elizabeth? Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Why don't you just tell me what? Yeah, I'll tell you mine is. Does that work? Yeah. Nine one seven six one two three zero zero six. <laughs> you guys can go over to the meadow park. Yeah, there you go. Great. Thank you. I got lights and stuff. I got lights. Girls, I don't know you, you don't know me, but here's the deal. For half an hour, I'd like you to just be with yourself. Don't be with each other. Go somewhere. Just be in, be, in nature, be in nature. Be in nature. Okay. I know. Be in nature. Um, that's that's one kind of nature. Yes. Hi. We're not going down there, please. Guys, up here, please. Oh my gosh! I'm scared of this. I asked you to go up the meadow area. Please go up the meadow area. We we'll have to find where the boxes are, okay? Yeah, yeah. You want to be about 50 feet away from the box. Boxes are up around the bend.